Hey guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today what we're going to do is we're going to work on a uh, an old-fashioned car clock. Old-fashioned car clocks are kind of like giant pocket watches. And they were used in the 19 teens, 20s, and 30s, even into the 40s. So let's take a look at this car clock and take a look at it. We're going to break it down, do a cleaning of it, a full service. Hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up and let's get started. So guys, if you like this video, I want you to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe to see more of my videos, please do. I appreciate it. If you can share these on social media and you find them helpful and you think there's somebody else you might uh, think finds these helpful, please do share it. It helps my channel grow and I appreciate it. Here you can see we're just disassembling the uh, car clock and it takes a little time. This is about uh, twice as big as the average pocket watch that I work on. And we're just going to take this apart systematically, similar to a pocket watch, until we get to the full plate bridge because uh, what we're going to find in here are two main spring barrels. So first I start with this assembly of the case, then I work to the balance wheel, and then we'll take out the escapement and let the watch wind down on its own. This will tell me uh, by listening to it if there's any other major problems, and I like to hear what goes on on the watch. Here you can see I turned it over, pulled off the cannon pinion and the hour wheel. I'm still letting it run down. Um, it did want to stop several times, and every time I pulled out another uh, gear on the uh, top of the, the uh, plate, it, it would run a little bit more. Now we're just going to take off this large three-quarter plate here and expose the train. And again, just take all your parts, keep them all together. And if you are going to do this and you're not sure about how the watch comes apart or goes back together, please take lots of pictures. Something we didn't have years ago. I used to have to draw all these out. So you can see there's the two mainspring barrels. Um, that's what allows these car clocks to run a, co a total of eight days. Those springs are giant and they run down very, very slowly, but they have enough power to run this, this pocket watch movement uh, a full eight days. Here you can see we're removing the final part of the uh, bridge and train and uh, exposing the escape wheel as well as the first or the third and the fourth wheels. So we'll just put those aside. And I believe some of these gear, these screws, you can see I'm going in and I'm just tightening things up because I did find a lot of loose screws in this. I don't know when this was last serviced. I didn't find any service marks on it. Now I'm going to pull off the plate that holds the winding gears and we'll expose that and pull those gears out and clean those. It's kind of hard to tell but if you look closely you'll see a lot of dried up oil. It's sad but you know nobody thinks about cleaning and servicing these. Here I'm just checking the rest of the screws to make sure they're tight. I'm going to screw in the uh, dial feet screws because we don't want those to come out during cleaning. And I'm going to open up the mainspring barrels, being careful not to pull out the uh, center pin because we don't want to lose the spring out of here. We want to take it out gently. Now I did do a service on these springs. I did not uh, replace them. What I did was I just wiped off the grease. I pulled them out, re-cleaned them, uh, polished them up a bit. Uh, here you can see I'm putting all the parts in baskets and I'm going to throw them in the cleaner. The balance wheel and hairspring, get hairspring, hairspring cleaner and then I'll throw that in the ultrasonic cleaner also. And I uh, didn't get a good video of me cleaning all the parts so I apologize here. You can see we were back to reassembly. But, you know, there's other videos I've got. If you go back and look at Pocket Watch Parts Cleaning um, in, in that playlist, you'll find out exactly what I did to clean these in the ultrasonic cleaner. So first, we'll put the winding gears back in, put that plate back together. Um, I'm going to reassemble and re-oil both mainsprings. Get those back onto the plate. And now it's time to assemble the train. And I'm using a holder. And you can see anytime I'm touching any of the nickel, 
I'm, I'm using my gloved hand. You should always wear gloves. I can't wear gloves on both hands because it kind of keeps me from feeling things, but I do wash my hands while I'm doing this. I keep uh, a little hot bowl of, of water soapy water and I wipe off my hands probably every couple of minutes uh, just to make sure that my fingers don't leave any oil on the nickel because it will ruin a watch <clears throat> so getting all these train gears back into position can be a little tricky but it's not unlike a pocket watch and in this case because this clock is so big it kind of makes it easier again I assemble the watch just the way it came apart. Once you get the plate back in place, uh, make sure that your gears are lined up and the pinions are in the jewels. If there are jewels, if there's no jewels, just you know, in the bearings. Get that screwed down. I don't screw them down all the way until I've tested the gears. And here you can see the trains in position and I'm just gonna apply a little oil to the uh, clutches and levers and make sure that uh, they all fall in place. I'll get that big plate on, that three-quarter plate back in, and I'm just going to use my fine tweezers and just make sure that all the gears and pinions are in the perfect place. Again, I don't screw anything down into position until all the gears and pinions are correct so that I don't damage any of them. Some of these parts are impossible to find, uh, especially on a hundred-year-old clock. Here you can see we're just putting the last of the screws in and everything is tight. Again, during this assembly process, I will check everything and I'm just going to apply a little drop of glue, glue, or oil to each pinion. I almost said glue. And I will give any jeweled areas that need it enough oil. Don't over oil, just one little tiny drop is all you need. Get that hour wheel back in position. Loosen up the dial feet. And time to get the dial in place. Now this is a metal dial that's painted and uh, it does not go on ultrasonic cleaner. I'm not going to do anything to this dial other than to just put it back on. Once the dial's back in position, I will give this a little wind and make sure that the gears are still working good. And they are, which is, which is perfect. And now we'll assemble the escapement. So I want to get the pallet fork back in position. And I'm going to put a little pre-oil on that. Get this into its pinion. The reason I do that is because the oil will hold it in place and I don't have to worry about the part coming out if I have to pick it up and move it around a little bit. The hardest, uh, one of the hardest parts is getting that uh, bridge back in position for the pallet fork. Once it's in, again, I don't tighten the screws. I just put the screws in very loose and then I play with the pallet fork to make sure that it's seated correctly before I tighten anything down. So you want to make sure that both the top and bottom of the pinion are in position so that you don't break that part. Once I'm happy with the position, I'll tighten the screws down. Now it's time to put the balance wheel back in. So we'll grab the balance wheel by the balance cock. I'm going to give a little oil to the parts I won't be able to get to once I do that. And now we're ready to assemble this. One nice thing is if you get this in correctly, um, it should take off by itself if you've given a little wind to the mainspring. So I typically wind the mainspring once the pallet fork is in place, and then I just like to make sure that everything's working. With the clock working perfectly, now I'm going to get this back into the case, and we'll put the case screws in. If you didn't notice, the stem and crown protrude from the bottom of the clock because the knob was typically under the dashboard. So give that another couple of winds and then I'll hook it up to the timing machine make sure that it's keeping accurate time. Looks good.
looks very good. Get that back cover back on. And for the final part, we will align the hands. There is no second hand on this. So all we have to do is worry about the hour and minute hand. We start with the hour hand. I'm going to set this at the nine o'clock position. And then I'll put the minute hand on. So once I got the hour and minute hands on, I'm just going to set the time. Um, that's just the way I do it. And if I have to go back and make any adjustments, make sure the hands are separated. Once the, everything is okay, we'll just screw the front cover back on. And there you go, guys, a 100-year-old car clock. I think this is too cool. Um, beautiful watch, clock, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, running perfect, keeping great time. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Hit the subscribe button. And if you can, share it on social media. Every little bit helps me grow, and I appreciate it. You guys have been the greatest. I appreciate you guys watching my, my restorations. And uh, happy watch hunting. Thanks guys for taking the time to watch some of my videos. I really appreciate it. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see new stuff that I put out, usually on a weekly basis, hit the subscribe button and you can get notified by clicking on that little bell. I really appreciate any uh, sharing that you can do and the thumbs up that I get if you like these videos kind of helps with uh, my channel to grow. You'll see that in the descriptions and on my website, I do put affiliate links to products that I show and use in these videos. Those affiliate links uh, give me a little small commission, doesn't cost you anything if you buy them. And when you buy within the first 24 hours of clicking on those links, I get a tiny little commission that helps keep this channel going. Any little bit helps to keep this up and running. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch it. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up and share on social media. Take care guys, happy watchmaking and jewelry making.